Hey guys, I'm Alex and welcome back to the Tarsha Homestead. So today we're working on some of our beekeeping equipment and these are boxes from a Langstroth hive. We bought four colonies of bees this year and with them came all of the boxes and equipment. As you can see behind me, there's varying colors and varying states of quality like, uh, you know, some of them are more used than others. And so what I'm working on right now is now that winter's here, we've taken these ones, these mediums off these are the honey supers, and that's where the bees will create honey. So since we don't need those for winter, we don't want the bees to have to try to keep that extra space warm. So these are just getting stored for the winter, but because we got them used, they're in varying shapes. So um, uh, varying maintenance levels, I guess is what you might say. So what I'm doing is just going around doing a bunch of maintenance. I'm trying to clean up these edges where the boxes sit on top of each other. So the reason why that matters to me is for a couple reasons. Every time we use our hive tool, which is just a flat bladed instrument that you slide in between the boxes in order to break them apart, we do a little bit of damage each time on the wood and we just kind of dent it a little bit, which really isn't that big of a deal. Bees don't care and the wood is fairly forgiving as long as you're not you know, going gorilla on it. If you're just putting it in there and prying them apart, it just does a little bit of damage in each corner. The reason why that matters to me though is because what that does is it creates a gap in between where these surfaces rest one on top of each other. There's two things that happen when there's a gap. One, the bees will fill it with propolis, which is like a bee, a tree sap bee spit mix that's really sticky. A lot of people call it bee glue. When they fill it with that, that's fine. Bees love propolis. They love having it in there. So no worries about that. But as a beekeeper, it's makes it so that the boxes are kind of glued together and stuck and granted they're going to do that anyway nothing i do is going to completely prevent that but the less they feel the need to seal it up the less they're going to use in those spots the easier it's going to be for me to get the boxes apart that's reason number one reason number two is because every time there's a high spot or a low spot like we're creating when we use that hive tool that's a place for water to get in and not that it's necessarily going to make all the way into the hive but even just getting right here and sitting here resting here will eventually cause the wood to rot. And I want these boxes to last as long as possible, even though it's very cheap. This is just pine wood. It's very simple to make. You can find directions online for making these, but there's no point in me wasting the good wood. If it's here, all I have to do is a few minutes of maintenance on each of these boxes and they'll be good as new and they'll last a lot longer. So first things first, this edge, you can see like there's some paint here too. I don't like it when the paint comes up onto the joining edges because paint and paint stick together no matter how cured it is. Uh, and so again, the boxes get stuck. So I like for these surfaces to be bare wood and the inside to be bare wood. The outside should be painted because that's what's exposed to the elements. So first thing I did was I tried to sand these edges. Well, this is all, this is like a mixture of wax and propolis. And so it's very sticky and it was filling up the pores on these uh, sanding discs. And so I was wasting sanding discs faster than you name it. And so I uh, tried a couple different things. The first thing I tried that worked fairly well was using a torch. Let me get this thing fired up here. So I'd use a torch and a piece of uh, paper towel. And so I could heat up the propolis here and once it turned shiny, then I could start wiping it off. And, that, and then after I do that, then I could come back with the sandpaper and clean it up. That was working better than not doing that, but I was still filling up sandpaper. Usually I was filling up a disc on one edge. And so it would take me four for one edge, eight for the total thing. Now it starts being not so worth it anymore in cost. So uh, sanding, not good. Fire and then sanding, not good. Uh, but what I found that does work really well is get yourself a hand plane. This is called a block plane. This one's by Wood River, so I got it from Woodcraft. Uh, it's a woodworking store. You don't have to get a name brand one. There's cheap ones that you can get at Home Depot or something like that, and those will probably do the trick. The key thing for these is dialing in the height of the blade. Don't judge me because mine's a little bit rusty. We had some weather get inside the shop and it got some of my tools, and I've yet to go back and clean them all up. But for the purposes of getting this done, it's working just fine. You just have to get this blade set just right. It's just barely proud of the surface of the plane. So now I can use this and instead of sitting there trying to grind off or sand off all of this propolis and stuff, I can take quick passes. Look at that difference with the block plane. And 
now I'm down to bare wood. So there's still a little bit of rot right here where, like I told you, a hive tool had been in here and pried on this. But as I come around and I clean up each of these sides, then it makes it so that there's less sanding that I have to do. These can be a little bit tricky. There is a little bit of a technique to using a plane, um, but it comes very fast. And to be honest, I'm not the greatest at it either. So I do the best I can. Really the biggest thing I've learned is that you want the face here to be your reference. So make sure you're keeping that nice and flat. This thing has like a little um, beveled in screw here so I can kind of keep a little bit of finger pressure on there. So I just do this on all four sides. And you can see that after doing one pass, it only took off the outside, but not the inside. That means that this would have been high on the outside and low on the inside, which would be all full of propolis because the bees would see that as an air gap. They like a nice sealed up container to live in. There we go. So I just made a couple passes with the planes. Now, these edges are not perfectly lined up. And so there's not much that I'm gonna be able to do to solve that problem, but I'm gonna go ahead and sand this anyway, even though I've planed it now. And that'll get this real nice and smooth. It'll clean up any of the rot that's here and it will help to make sure that the uh, edges right here where the sides join uh, are fairly, I don't know what the word is for that, um, flush, there we go. So let me do that real quick. Okay, so now that's nice and clean. Now, look at the comparison. Here's the side I haven't done yet. So as you can imagine, with some of this paint and some of this wax and propolis and some of the rot here and then the pry marks from Hive Tools, when I set this on another box, it's not gonna seal up very well there. So we'll get water intrusion, which means more rot. We'll get propolis put in by the bees to attempt to seal it up, which will make it sticky. And with the paint there, it's just going to stick to the box below it. So by making it like this, now there's gonna be a nice surface for the two boxes to mate up against each other, and it's much less likely to have water intrusion or issues. Um, even if it does, this is just still good maintenance to do periodically to eliminate the rot and to make these boxes last as long as possible. You don't wanna go crazy planing off material because these boxes are kind of a standard size. If you go too far, then they no longer may fit the frames or something like that. So don't go crazy with it, but that's plenty right there. So now I'll do this side and I'll get them uh, ready for paint. After I've done that, I'm going to come through and sand the exterior and get that ready for a coat of paint. The interior, you noticed I've kept that bare wood. The bees like to cover this with a little bit of wax, a little bit of propolis. And so this smells like bees. This smells like their pheromones. It smells like their home to them. This is important because we don't want bees to abscond or to leave the hive because a hive is not suitable for them. Uh, that's actually pretty rare, but having a hive that smells like bees, that has already had bees in it before, is uh, very attractive to bees. So this is great to use when you have like a new hive or uh, let's say you wanna catch a swarm. Anything that has some of the old bee material in there is very much more attractive to the bees. So I like to keep the inside pretty clean. Um, what I will do is maybe hit it just with the torch real quick to make sure if there are any uh, eggs in there from insects that those are killed. Um, I may freeze them as well to help with that. But my primary goal right now is to clean up the edges, sand the outside and get it ready for paint. All this kind of darker spot right here all this black that's actually the start of some wood rot it's really apparent there was one spot let me see if I can find it well, I, I started to sand it out already actually um, but right here it was actually starting to take away material and so I sanded a little bit longer in the corner to help bring that in so 
That's the kind of thing that uh, kills a box really quick is the wood rot. So we want to keep them as sealed up as we can with nice joining surfaces. Now on to the outside to get this sanded and uh, prepped for paint. Here's an example where I'm not gonna try to sand because there's enough propolis right there, it'll gum up my sandpaper in no time. So that's where I'll use the torch just to get that cleaned up before I sand that. And you notice that I'm not going down to bare wood. The goal here is at perfection. This is gonna sit out in the weather. It's not a furniture piece, right? So we don't need to go for like a highest quality woodworking skill here. What we're just trying to do is sand off anything that's flaky or uh, well, in particular flaky, but there's some runs in this and uh, it's always a good idea to sand before you paint. So um, we're just taking it down a little bit, taking off some of the funk and then uh, it'll be ready for paint. I am going to go around and hit each one of these nails with a nail set and a hammer just to tighten the box back up again one time. Sorry, I had to turn that away from where you could see it. Being short sucks sometimes, and I couldn't see it, so. All right, so now we have a box that has cleaned up edges. If I were to take another box that has cleaned up edges, now when you set them together, I'm just gonna look at them. I, don't, I know you can't see it from that angle. But yeah, they're nice. They're sitting together nicely. Not a lot of room for water intrusion. Maybe a little bit right here because this is actually damaged. Um, and you can probably see that on the video. It's damaged right there. Um, I could put a little wood filler in there. I don't care that much. We're close enough. So these are my finished boxes that I'm getting ready to paint. I'm going to continue getting the other ones cleaned up. I won't record that because once you've seen it, once you've seen them all. Um, once I get them all done, then we'll come back. We'll look at how we're going to do paint, what kind of paint we're going to use, and then uh, preparing these for winter storage. This is only pieces from a couple of hives. So I've got a lot of painting ahead of me. And what's really, really even worse, that I have a full hive, which is two deeps and two supers. So two of these deep ones and two of the medium ones, plus a lid, an inner cover, a base like that front one. Um, yeah, and that's it. Uh, that I still haven't assembled yet that's gonna need paint. So. Um, I guess I'd better go get to assembly on that so that I can paint this all at once and be done. I don't like painting. Okay, so I've finished assembling the rest of the final hive. So you can see, I need a shower. Um, but now we've got literally every piece of beekeeping equipment that needs to be painted has been sanded, prepped, assembled, um, planed, and is ready for paint. I'm not gonna bore you with that part of it. That's not what this video is about. Uh, this video is really about showing you how to do the maintenance on these used ones. So when you get a used box, you can, uh, or a used set of hives or whatever, um, you can restore the equipment and reuse them for a long time. So now looking at all of these with their nice clean tops on them, I'm really excited to get them all painted up and fresh for the next season. Um, but remember, the biggest trick I've learned through all this is that uh, forget about the torch, forget about the sander, go for the planer, hand plane. It's called a block plane. Those things are magic for shoring up this uh, joining edge right here where the two boxes sit on top of each other. Uh, trying to melt the propolis off or sand the propolis off is a recipe for frustration. Plane it off real nice and easy quick way to get a flat surface and then sand the outside for paint. 
good luck. Uh, I hope you are going to use that tip and find that useful. And uh, if not, then I hope it was entertaining. Either way, I hope you enjoyed watching me get a couple things done. While we're here, you might as well get a quick little glimpse of where we're at on the shop build. It's coming along. So anyway, thanks for following along here at Tarsha Homestead, and I hope you'll like and subscribe and come back for more video content that we do in the future. See ya.